many of the cities of ancient Anatolia and the Near East display a very diverse, sometimes even hybrid culture. The amalgamation of Greek, Macedonian, indigenous and Parthian traditions and finally the impact of Rome resulted in the creation of new forms of urbanism, urban identity and urban religion. In many of these cities we see both the continuity of ancient local cults and the introduction of new gods and new forms of religious practice. Increased mobility resulted in the spread of religious ideas over large distances. A good example of a variety of religious life in the Eastern Empire is Dura Europos. Dura Europos was an ancient town at the Euphrates River, close to the modern border between Syria and Iraq. In the 2nd and 3rd century CE, it served as a Roman border fortress at the frontier with Persia. Dura is sometimes labelled Pompeii of the Desert, because the ruins of the town are exceptionally well preserved. Among the most impressive remains are various sanctuaries. They provide a fascinating picture of religious diversity. There are temples for Greek gods and for gods venerated by Roman soldiers. On the other hand, we see the strong impact of local Syrian and Mesopotamian religious traditions. The god Arsu, who is depicted in this relief, is an example of a local Semitic god who was popular in Dura, Europos and Palmyra. He is wearing a local dress and rides a camel. It is often assumed that he was seen as a protector of caravans. At a close distance to the pagan temples, a Jewish synagogue and a Christian cult building existed. The Christian building is in fact the earliest preserved Christian cult building in the world and its decoration can tell us a lot about early Christian religious practices. The wall paintings illustrate stories from the New Testament. This is a picture of the story of Jesus curing a paralytic. Dura Europos is a fascinating place to explore the many facets of urban religion in the Hellenistic and Roman Near East. In Dura, worshippers of many different gods lived next to each other. Descendants of Greek colonists, local Semitic people, Palmyrene traders, Jews and Roman soldiers lived there with their own gods and own sanctuaries. In this polytheistic environment, religious hatred was the exception. A good example for the persistence, but also for the modification and adaptation of ancient religious traditions in the cities of the Hellenistic and Roman East can be found further north in the city of Dolike. The main god of this city was Jupiter Dolicanus. He can be easily recognized. He stands frontally on a bull and brandishes his weapons, a thunderbolt and the double axe. This image finds no parallels in Greek and Roman cults, but it is well attested in ancient Near Eastern religion. In the second and first millennium BCE, the mighty storm god, the master of the skies, was depicted along the same lines. Here you can see a stele with the image of the storm god dating to the 9th century BCE from Tilbasip, an Iron Age city in Syria. When you compare the two images, it is obvious that the Roman image of the god of Dolike continues pre-Hellenistic ideas. Recent excavations in the main sanctuary in Dolike have revealed that the cult indeed started in the first millennium BCE. When the Greeks and later the Romans entered Syria, the local population of Dolike continued to worship the ancient storm god. Yet you can also see significant changes in the god's image. His outfit has been adapted to contemporary fashions. He is wearing a military uniform and a different kind of headgear. The image was, so to speak, updated.
If you want to study the local religion of ancient cities in the Hellenistic and Roman Near East, we have to work with a large array of sources. We have to study ancient inscriptions, ancient literature and archaeological remains like sculpture, ruins of temples and finds of sanctuaries like, for example, bones, which can tell us a lot about sacrifices which were performed in these sanctuaries. Many of the cities of the East minted their own coins for local usage. These coins show the head of the emperor on the front side. The motifs of the back side, however, relate to the minting city. Frequently, these motifs refer to the gods and the temples of these cities. This coin, for example, which has been minted by the city of Tyre in the early 2nd century, has the portrait of Emperor Trajan on the front side. The back side, however, shows the image of the main god of the city, Melkart. Coins do not only show local gods, but also local sanctuaries and temples. This coin here, for example, which has been minted by the city of Pergamum for the province of Asia, has a temple on the back side. Inside the temple you see two cult images and the prominent inscription, Latin inscription, even tells us who is depicted inside the temple. It is the Emperor Augustus and the personification of the city of Rome. The coin image reflects an important new development in the religious life of the cities in the Roman period. The veneration of the Roman Emperor, the imperial cult, became increasingly important. The imperial cult was an important tool for the cities to express their allegiance to the Roman Emperor and the Roman state. In return, they could hope for imperial support and benevolence. This is the reason why the city of Pergamon presents the temple on this coin. It's a propaganda tool to underline the importance of the city.